Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. So glad you chose to start your day with me. More importantly, so glad you chose to start your day with God. Pressing forward against the stream, against the, the, the current, against the worldliness that surrounds you. Choosing instead to pursue God with everything that you are. Not only for your well-being, but for the well-being of those that are following behind. The generations yet to come that need strong men and women who love God, showing them the way. So let's get started. Yesterday I introduced or began introducing our subject matter for the next several devotions, and it's based off of Hannah Hernard's Heinz Feet or High Places. It's an allegory similar to uh, Pilgrim's Progress, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Not only is it something uh, whimsical, it's a, a story, it's a story that uh, God shared with with me and the rest of the Franks when my children were much younger, and it made an impact on my life, and I pray that it made an impact on my children's life, and I'm hoping that it will make an impact on your life. And as I begin to, to uh, review the book, uh, to prepare these lessons, it's already uh, helping me uh, because I'm in a very different place than I was when I, I listened to this book previously. And so I think that there's something for everyone, for new believers and for those that have been pursuing God for a very long time. So I want to be able to share uh, a little bit more of an introduction today, uh, give you a sense of why it's called Heinz Feet for High Places. We spoke a little bit about that yesterday. But what I'm really doing is pausing in order to get your copy to you, which I still have in over here, my hand over here. Um, and I need to get this to you, okay? Because the best I'm going to be able to do is excerpts from the book, but I want you to have the, the complete book for your very own to read the entire thing. So we're going to, to drag our feet a little bit today, if you will. Uh, in hopes that we can get as many of these out to you as possible. Uh, if you cannot wait or you're concerned about getting one of these in your hands, you can find it on Amazon. If you have a Kindle, you can, uh, I believe, at least I was able to download it for free. Uh, so that's a way to, to follow along as well. But uh, if you are looking for a copy, I am trying to get these out through Dave. Um, may have to do something different through Chester and, and Diane. Uh, Dave was out sick, so please pray for Dave today. But it did put a little bit of a snag in my plan of getting these out uh, quickly to you. But we will make that happen. And this week, I am using more excerpts than I will most likely next week, uh, because the assumption is by Sunday, all of those who are interested, I'll distribute the rest of them on Sunday. So I understand that you don't have the book yet and that you are uh, uh, still needing the book. So we're going to slow roll things just a little bit to let everybody catch up. But in the meantime, there's enough of an inter introduction and a, to give you a little bit more sense of where we're heading um, as we look uh, through the preface before we get to the first chapter. So that's what we're working on today. So Psalm 1833, this is the format that we're going to use each and every day that we talk about this book. This is a story based on God's word, but we always want to emphasize God's word. We want to make it clear that we are seeking God in his word, just as we got done with Psalm 119 and learned the power and the, uh, the strength and the resource that is found in God's word. We don't want to diminish that by uh, emphasizing a story written by Hannah, no matter how clever it is, no matter how uh, it may help us uh, 
relate to Scripture uh, in a different way, we want to make sure that we are basing everything in God's Word. So, right out of the gate, uh, Psalm 18, 33, He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. Now, this is the NIV translation. If you looked at the King James Version, it would say, He maketh my feet like hinds feet. Um, and that's where we get the title of the book, Hinds Feet, for high places. Okay. Now, yesterday, if you... Let me back up just a moment. Uh, very important. I'm getting these out to YouTube. They should also be popping up on the, the website itself. I'll mention more of that tomorrow. But um, don't feel like you're getting behind. If you don't hear about this devotional until a, a week from today, you can always go back. I'm going to be marking which chapter we're in. You'll see it uh, today, for instance, going to be noted as introduction. So... These are, I'm saying the date just as I've always done, but these aren't uh, specific to a, a, a date. So uh, if you get behind, you can follow along and catch up very easily by just watching a couple of them back to back. All right, enough of that. So the format specifically, going to make sure that we highlight God's Word. Now, yesterday we spoke of hind's feet or deer's feet or a gazelle uh, from the Song of Solomon, and we related it to, to Jesus, and that he has overcome the world, and he uh, moves over obstacles that seem insurmountable as a mountain, just as a, as a deer leaps from, from rocky point to rocky point. Now today, and that's the root of the entire allegory, is that God desires, as followers of Christ, God desires to fit us with the same uh, feet, with the ability to overcome as Jesus overcame. And that's the process that we enter into when we come into right relationship with God. And that's the process that the main character that we'll introduce tomorrow undergoes during her relationship with God. And as I mentioned yesterday, just to, to reinforce, this is not a story of, of someone who has just come into relationship with God. This is somebody that's been in relationship with God for, for some time, but hasn't realized her, her full purpose, her full potential. And that's the, the interesting nature of this. There are so many of us that, that are a part of Connections that haven't really found what part of the body of Christ we are. We haven't found our confidence. Uh, we haven't found our strength. And that's where this story truly is going to, to help prayerfully illuminate God's word, illuminate God's promise. We spoke of hope on Sunday. My desire is to rekindle your hope so that you are looking for the kingdom, that you are looking to get everything you can possibly get out of God, uh, relationship with God. So not only, as we talked yesterday, is Jesus fitted with hinds feet, but God desires to fit us with hinds feet as well. So this is a Psalm of David in 18. And then we also see it again mentioned by the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 3, verse 19. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. So mentioned once in Psalms and then perhaps remembered and mentioned again in Habakkuk. And prayerfully, it'll be something that we can, can visualize, that uh, when we talk about obstacles and overcoming obstacles, and if you remember Hannah looking out the back of the, of, of the school where she was a missionary and seeing the, the gazelles leaping uh, on the mountaintop, hopefully we can begin to relate and understand 
that it's not an easy path that that's set before us and as we spoke on easier paths and the majority of of people choose those easier paths and yet god calls us to the heights and we must be fitted with the right feet the same feet that jesus had so from the book again this is from the preface and it's very similar to what we read yesterday from the back uh, dust cover of the book the lesson of accepting and triumphing over evil of becoming acquainted with grief and pain and ultimately of finding them transformed into something incomparably precious, of learning through constant glad surrender to know the Lord of love himself in a new way and to experience unbroken union with him. These are the lessons of the allegory in this book. The challenge to allow God to to strengthen us. We spoke Sunday about being forged in the fire. Hopefully this will give us a better sense of why God calls us to walk through such difficult terrain and seems to challenge us on a regular basis. Perhaps the Lord will use it to speak comfort to some of his loved ones who are finding themselves forced to keep company with sorrow and suffering, or who walk in darkness and have no light or feel themselves tossed with with tempest and not comforted. It may help them to understand a new meaning in what is happening. For the experiences through which they are passing are all part of the wonderful process by which the Lord is making real in their lives the same experience which made David and Habakkuk cry out exultantly, The Lord God maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon mine high places. All right, so I think we finally get the idea of what this book is about and what we're going to be studying. And I hope that you are comforted. I hope you're not only comforted, I hope that you're challenged to continue to persevere, to continue to press forward, to finally be able to put some meaning to the what you've experienced and what you're going to experience in the coming days, weeks, months, and years. But prayerfully, we will get to that place where we we continue to reference that we perceive that Paul got to at the end of his ministry. That though he he was uh, tapped out, that he had given everything to the ministry he could possibly give, he found joy and peace. And he He rose to such heights that the devil could not, uh, the weapons that the devil could, uh, crafted could not reach him. And those are the same heights that God is calling us to. Prayerfully, I hope that this book will touch you and it will bring some new understanding to you. And I'm excited that you have chosen to continue to follow along and pursue God and and join this journey. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that that all things work to the good and that you have a plan. Lord, many of us are going through difficult times. 2020 has been an awful year. Our friends, our family, there's, there's not a life that has not been touched by, by this pandemic. And meanwhile, we're just at the time that we need to find and be comforted by the closeness of our relationships, we are, we're called to remain isolated. 
I pray, Lord, that you would continue to draw connections together, no matter where we are. That you would use this devotional and this book that we're going to study to draw us nearer to you and draw us nearer to each other. We aren't alone. We are never alone. You go before us in all things. And you are a creative God, looking for ways to knit us together, even in the time of pandemics, stresses, strains. You're a glorious God. Comfort us today, Lord. Renew our hope as we seek you with all that we are. The view from where we are seems insurmountable. Yet, we know that you've overcome them. And we praise you, Lord, as you desire to, desire to fit our feet. The same feet that we witnessed Paul fell on. And we witnessed those in the generations before our We thank you, Lord, for your faith. Precious name. Amen. All right, tomorrow we're going to jump in and we are going to start chapter one. Like I said, I'm going to take as many excerpts as I possibly can. Uh, the book is relatively small and the chapters are short, so I don't perceive it being uh, a major issue. Uh, we'll continue to set a slow enough pace where folks can join us and catch up. I do want to make sure that we are, we are seeking God's wisdom or seeing how God is going to minister to us each day through this book. So chapter one begins tomorrow, and I look forward to the journey with you. Know that I love you and I miss you.